The Marketing Funnel Strategy Show. More leads. More sales. More predictability. Introducing Jaron Hyman, sales and marketing expert. Introducing Serena Carly, marketing and outsourcing expert. Hey there, everyone. Welcome to the Marketing Strategy Show for today, uh, which is Friday, the 8th of the 10th, 2021. My name is Jared Harmer. I'm here with the amazing Serena Carly. How are you doing today, Serena? I'm doing amazing. Thank you. Seeing you just said I was amazing, I might as well be amazing. Feel amazing. Yeah, exactly. A hundred percent. So, guys, today's show, you know the price, right? If we add some value to you in some way, shape, or form, we maybe make you think a little bit differently. You get something that you think is an amazing idea that kind of gets your uh, juices flowing. Uh, then all we ask as a payment is to just share the show. Share it with somebody, tag somebody with... Uh, exactly what you've got from it um, and, you know, share the love, right? That's all we ask for. We come at you two times a week with free information that's going to be able to help you move forward, take more action, get more clients, better understand your business, better understand exactly in your marketing what you must do in order to become more profitable, right? I mean, this is the topic today, right? Because... You know, my, when I first started in business, the only thing I knew how to do was to pick up a phone and call somebody. That's all I knew how to do. And I was still working out how to speak to people. I was still working out how to find those people. And the only way I knew how to find them was to go down to the news agency at 7.30 a.m. in the morning, grab the newspaper, scroll to the classified section, sit there in my car and literally just cold call out, out of that classified section to tradies. That's literally all I knew how to do when it came to marketing. Um, that's all I knew about business. Business was find somebody who wants your product, sell them the product, okay? There's a process that you go through to get them to that stage. That's all I knew when I first started. And I knew one thing. If I spoke to 10 people, I would close nine every single time, even if they didn't know me. All they had to be is just, you know, qualified and booked in for an appointment and that appointment run and follow the process and it closes. That's, but that's all I knew about business. And, you know, fast forward now on 10... Oh, you know, I don't forget how long it was, 2000, end of 2007 to, to now, basically, however long that was. I don't know how long that was off the top of my head. I think it's 14 years or something. Uh, you're on mute, Serena, by the way. So. Oh, sorry. I said 14 years. years. 14 years, right? So we go on 14 years later, and if only I knew what I knew now. <laughs> but isn't that a typical thing that we all say, right, Serena? We do. And, and you know, sometimes I sort of think oh, I have it even more so than you, Jared, to be able to say, oh, my God, if only I knew back then what I know now, would it make a, a, a big difference? Of course it would when it comes to business. But um, mm -hmm. I think the good thing about it is that it, you, you're learning as you go. So quite often when you make mistakes, you will get to learn more specifically. So mm -hmm. if you just had the knowledge and you just went for it, maybe it wouldn't quite be the same. It'll be a little bit different somehow. Well, I heard this wise piece of advice uh, just yesterday, actually. I was going through some trainings and things like that because obviously we're getting coached at the moment, right? Everybody gets coached. Everybody needs a coach or a mentor or yeah. somebody to be able to help them move forward, right? Because it'll help you move forward faster. Um, I heard... You know, you have to go through, you know, a process. Uh, you have to be beaten up a little bit and you've got to have those learning lessons to turn you into a person that is worthy of having that goal, 
right? So, you know, you could have a dream of, you know, running a $250,000 a year business or a million dollar a year business. But the reality is at the moment, if you were given a $250,000 a year business or a million dollar business, you wouldn't deserve that business for starters because it was just given to you and it just came and you didn't have all the learning lessons along the way. And, you know, you'd probably sit in that role for a day and you'd probably die. Like you'd probably sit in it for an hour, a $10 million a year company, and you'd probably freaking die because you would go, holy shit, how am I dealing with all of this crap? Oh, now I've got to, you know, make, you, you mean I've got to make a million dollars a month before I make any profit? <gasps> And they That's go right. into like a hard, oh, 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 yeah. you know, it's a it's a freaking tough thing, isn't it? Can you imagine that, right? Hey, I've got you got a business for you. Here you go. Now you got to go and make a million dollars a month before you have any profit, right? Before you make any money, you have to make a million. Good luck. See ya. <laughs> what do you think you're gonna do? <laughs> you, you're gonna have a heart attack, right? You you used to making uh five thousand dollars a month in a job, and now you got to make a million dollars in one month before you get paid your five thousand dollars. It's a different way to think about it, right? And a lot of people don't think about it this way. <laughs> um, and it's a huge wake up call, right? So you got to kind of go through a process of being beaten up a little bit have a few little learning lessons along the way, right? And, you know, you got to think a little bit differently and you got to solve smaller problems. Uh, and then when you get to the bigger problems, you, you, you're better equipped to be able to solve those bigger problems because you're now presented with them and you've gone through the process. And I found that was yes. very interesting when I heard it. I was listening to it and I was like, well, that really does make sense because me in 2007, I couldn't have handled a business like we've got today, you know. Um, we've got nine team members here. Um, we're growing quarter on quarter and, you know, we've got our own challenges the same as any business owner does. Um, and, you know, I had a, a conversation with a guy the other day and he said, uh, and I was talking to him about, you know, our challenges. And he's like, oh, okay, yeah, fair enough. I mean, you'll you'll get there. He said, you know, we've got um, a, a bit of a tradie sort shortage in our area where we're working at the moment. We just acquired, uh, you know, three new contracts, which are five-year contracts to be done. Um, and I need to hire 350 electricians by March next year. Uh, which is six months away, and he said there isn't actually at the moment enough tradies, electricians uh, that are fully qualified and have the certifications necessary in order to do a job of this level at the moment. Um, and, you know, we're in the middle of a pandemic and normally what we do is we'd get someone from overseas to come in and we can't do that because, you know, we've got now two weeks quarantine and, you know, I've gone, holy shit, we've got no problems compared to you. You know, so there's always a, you know, I guess a, a lesson to be learnt with things, right? The challenges, whatever they are that you've got today, there's always someone with a bigger problem and there's always someone that's already solved those problems as well. And that brings us to the subject today, Serena, as well, right? Because, you know, a lot of people say to us, yeah, I, I run marketing campaigns or, yeah, I'm good at sales or they just say, yep, I, you know, our clients pay us this much um, and, you know, we, they, they tell us all these things, right? Um, and the reality is when you look at it in fine detail, it's never the case. Not properly anyway. Not 100% because it's like, you know, hey, would you bet your life on this or, 
your mums or whatever that this is true, 110%. And then people go, oh, uh, no, I wouldn't. <laughs> and then when you look at it, it's completely different. I'll give you an example. I sat down with a uh, salon owner uh, two weeks ago and I had a good look at their marketing campaigns. And they said to me, they said, yeah, you know, we spend about $800 a month on advertising and it's going really well. We get, you know, plenty of bookings every single month and all this type of stuff. And, you know, but we want to get more out of it and we want to do better. And I looked at it, I said, okay, how many bookings are you getting from your advertising specifically? They said, I don't know. It's like, interesting. Um, and they're like, yeah, but I think it's, go it's going well. Like it's, you know, we're getting plenty of bookings and, you know, we, we could be doing better, but we're getting plenty of bookings. And I had a look at the very simple analytics that are just sitting on the back end of Facebook. And turns out they get zero bookings from their advertising. So right now we're at a bill of $800 a month for the last four months that they've been spending. Um, campaigns look great, but they're getting no bookings. So, you know, if there's a business that's spending $800 a month and getting no bookings, uh, what's the definition of insanity, do you think, Serena? What's the definition of insanity around this? Um, there's a saying about, you know, if you keep doing the same thing every month, day in, day out, you'll get the same results all the time. Yeah. So it's like, you know, how often do we, I mean, would you like to pay $800 for no results every single month? I wouldn't be paying it even halfway through the month. I mean, the, the whole thing with, with your ads is you've got to keep tweaking, tweaking, tweaking to get it one where you're getting a return and you're getting, you know, a return of, um, Mm. Not even just, I mean, getting a return of numbers is good because sometimes you don't turn clients into clients straight away. You have to nurture and build them up. But, you know, mm. if you um, see what's going on and then you tweak it while you're doing it, you know, then you start to see um, how you can make different changes. So if you start off and it's not quite what you want, you tweak it and then all of a sudden you start getting a few more people and then you tweak it some more and the cost of your, your thing goes down and then maybe you start you know, trickling in a couple mm. of clients. But apart from the clients, you're getting the leads. The leads are very important whether they become clients or not straight away. So it pays to be able to have that budget every month regardless while you're nurturing and building up your treasure trove as I just made up about it anyway um because you know it's it's like aladdin came to my mind then and the cave full of treasure you know it took a long time to fill that cave, cave of wonders of yeah cave of wonders it took a long time to fill that with all the goodies inside it didn't just happen in one day so um yeah so that that's my um analogy of it an analogy Analogy, yeah. I mean, that's that's so true, right? It's like you can you and for me, like even a couple of weeks, like you said, right, of spending money to not get a result, right? Even a couple of weeks is too long, you know. Um, you're advertising; you should be getting a result from it daily, in some way, shape, or form that fills up the pipeline of people within your business to generate revenue. You know, um, so, you know, what's really important for you to understand and to get super clear on is what are the numbers that my business is doing right now? And I've got to be 110% clear on exactly what those numbers are. Because like that example I just gave, you spend an $800 a month and you're not getting results, Right. Um, you're obviously just spending it because you don't understand what's really going on, right? And you're like, oh, yeah, I just spend on advertising and I get in front of more people. I mean, it's great to get in front of people, but, you know, if it's not generating me leads, if it's not generating me bookings, if it's not generating me sales, if it's not getting me rebookings, then something's got to be done about it, right? If I don't know what the big picture is that I'm looking for from a marketing campaign, right, which is, I mean, not is what, what's this person going to pay me one time, 
But what do they pay me over a whole year? What do they pay me over two years, three years? How, do they even stay that long, right? And if they don't stay that long, it's like, how can I get them to stay that long? Better questions give you a better answer. Um, you know, I can assume that, you know, people pay me, and this is an assumption, I could have an assumption based, okay, someone pays me $5,000, right, um, and the assumption is they pay, stay with me for six months or they stay with me for 12 months or whatever it is, right, that's an assumption. So I could assume that my lifetime value of a client is maybe $5,000, but then it's like, okay, would I bet my life on the fact that it is $5,000, the lifetime value or LTV of a client? No. So, you know, if you understand your business better, if you understand a lot of the numbers around your business, and I'm not a numbers person. Are you a numbers person, Serena? I'm, I'm a numbers person in a bit of a different way to your numbers person. So um, I can calculate numbers, you know, in my head because I did used to work in a bank, you know, from, I left school and went straight into the bank. And yeah. um, we used to have to, the numbers we did was we didn't really have computers back then at the start and we had to put everything by figures and we had to add them up in our heads. They wouldn't let us use a calculator, which was a good thing. So that made me very fast with numbers so I can calculate numbers quite quickly in my head. And the way yeah. I calculate them is on a bit of a different angle to maybe like accountants and bookkeepers and all that sort of do when they're doing cash flow projection and um, all that sort of thing. So, yeah, I can do them, but my way. It's my way or the highway. Yeah, and, you know, I've obviously got my ways and things like that. And I think the, the difference between us both as well, and we're both like this, is like we're not married to the way that our way is as well. You know, like I like to understand my marketing numbers, my sales numbers. I like to understand you know, what a lifetime value of someone is and then go, how can I increase that? How can I increase my conversion rates? How can I get more clicks? How can we generate more leads? How can we better the quality of the leads? How can we get more bookings? How can we get more uh, sales conversations? How can we re-engage more of past clients and past leads and past appointments and all these different things? can we filter them to another channel, right, uh, to be able to re-engage, to be able to uh, increase value, to be able to upsell, cross-sell, whatever. Like that's my numbers, right, and I'm not a numbers guy. I never have been a numbers guy. I actually failed mathematics at school, um, did absolutely terribly, did not understand anything to do with mathematics at school, by the way. Um and, you know, I suck at spelling, yet I can write Facebook ad copy and marketing copy and long sales letters and all this sort of stuff still. Yes, there's, you know, unfinished sentences through it. I miss a comma. I don't know what a semicolon is and where it's supposed to be. And I assume that it's supposed to be here, but it's not supposed to be there. Like all these different things, right? Um, you know, my mind floats all over the place like everyone's. I procrastinate like everyone, you know, everyone does. But, you know, we there's there's things that that there's a level of things that we need to be able to understand and we've got to work on a lot of our weaknesses, right? Otherwise, the weakness will be the bottleneck. Because you'll only grow uh, to the level that you are at in here. And, you know, your downfalls, right? Yes, you can get other people in to do things and so on too. But, you know, there's still an element where you can't just expect somebody to just do things. I mean, you know, show faith in them, give them every opportunity to do it, all these types of things. But there's an element where you've still got to work on your weaknesses to be able to show ways to do things, streamline things and so on too. So you got to work on your weaknesses as well as a person. Otherwise, you just fall to the lowest common denominator, whatever that is. Um, and you'll just become your own bottleneck. So, 
you know, if your strengths are in marketing and sales, you got to work on your operations, right? Which, you know, could be a bottleneck. Um, if your operations are great and your marketing and sales is shit, um, then, you know, you got to work on your lowest common denominator and your weakness, which is your marketing and sales. Marketing tunes in and you can't sell. That's your weakness. You got to work on your weakness. So, the whole idea of today's session is the better you can understand all of these numbers around your marketing, around your sales, around your finances, around your client acquisition process, your lifetime values, your uh, amount of inquiry that comes in every single month, you can like how how many conversions come from that, how many qualified leads come from that. You know, how much traffic comes in on the front end to be able to produce this result, where it comes from is also very important as well. Because the where can also be the non profitable. I uh, just came from a meeting before this, and the meeting was around, you know, client acquisition, growth, bookings for a salon. And, you know, they're doing a lot of they're doing a lot of organic stuff at the moment, Serena, actually. Um, and they're just putting ads and so on on marketplace and just other channels. Um, and what they're getting at the moment is they're getting people that want to negotiate on price <laughs> of a service. a service that has expenses attached to it, a service that, you know, is very, very high value too, by the way, looking at a lot of the results. Um, but, you know, what? why do people go to Marketplace for starters? That's the question that you've got to be asking yourself. Like if you're advertising yourself on Marketplace, you're advertising yourself on somewhere like Groupon, uh, Scoopon, um, these types of websites, what do people go to these websites for? And, you know, okay. most of the time, in not all the time, but very large percentage of the time, people go there because they want a deal. Yeah, cheap. And when someone wants a deal, you know, it might be they're not prepared to pay the full price, which is, you know, heavy. Everyone is after a deal at the end of the day, but they're not willing to pay full price. Um, hence the reason they come to these areas. So naturally, in terms of clientele, they're probably not going to be a you know, a client that would probably pay you two, three thousand dollars over a year, or five, or ten thousand dollars over a whole year. Because you know, once you go further down the funnel in price, the less and less people become that that go down to this level, right? That's why there's, you know, some hairdressers that will charge five, six hundred, a thousand dollars plus, right? I'm just using these as an example um, for like cut, color, and all these types of things and toners, the exact same service that the home salon charges a hundred dollars for. Interesting, right, Serena? Yep. Very. Interesting. Well, it's like, you know, why why do some businesses charge 10 times more than others? I think they have, there's a couple of different things. They've probably set their business up different um, with more, I, I want to say, almost through like professionalism um, mm. and they have more faith in what they're doing and in their knowledge. So people who sort of want to go cheaper can be usually sometimes yeah. they're starting out and they want to, you know, try and attract um, just to get people, you know, regardless, just, just to get people to deal with them, I think, and they're happy to get anybody. Uh, they'd probably be the sort that would do that. Um, maybe not having put enough um, thought into what they're doing as well and they don't have the knowledge. So if they don't have the knowledge... They just do whatever they think needs to be done regardless of what it is and, and therefore they will have to go through that experience of failing by doing that, which is okay because, you know, we all learn by experience. But, you know, as long as they can afford to lose 
by learning through the experience until they be able to then get the knowledge of what can take them further. I think that makes sense. It does. 100% it makes sense, right? Like everyone starts somewhere or every master was once a disaster, so to speak. Um, yes, in the earlier stage of businesses, we got to get stuff through the door, right? And we've got to do whatever it takes because there's a thing called opportunity cost, yeah. right? Um, yep. Which means yep. basically if you've got free space right now, that's costing your business in opportunity. So if you know as a capacity you can take 25 clients a week, um, if you've only got 20, you've got five there costing you every single week opportunity cost, every single week. And you're better to have some. And if you're paying staff to cover that time and they're doing nothing, right, it's actually even an expense. It's the whole I, It's the whole thing that we're talking about today is like, you understand these things. If you get something in, it costs you less, but it actually increases your top line revenue. I mean, if people just adopted the philosophy of that one thing, filling the opportunity cost with something, so they get something rather than nothing, right? They would probably add 10 to 20% to their top line in some more. cases and sometimes a lot more maybe sometimes a little bit less because you know they've been in business longer and all these different things and in place right but if you just adopt the philosophy of filling that opportunity cost so it costs you less right yes you might not get your full cash whatever it is that you normally charge maybe right um but you have something in there that gives you something back in return uh you just look at filling that, like if you have really slow Tuesdays or really slow Mondays and you just fill those days with something, right? Um, shit, the amount of revenue that that adds to you every single week would just be off the charts if it was full. And then after that, you can replace it with higher value because you've got all that extra money that you didn't have before, right, coming through the door now. And you can easily invest some of that back that you wouldn't have had anyway into, you know, finding and replacing it with higher value. But, um, you know, it's uh, most people will just prefer to have that costing them continually. Yeah, I know. And, and a lot of that comes with one couple of different things thinking they know better not wanting to listen to someone who does know and a lot of it comes down to not wanting to spend money as well which is i think a big factor they're all about getting the clients in but please you know how much is it going to cost me i don't want to spend money to get them well how do you expect your clients to spend money with you if you're not prepared to spend money to get them at the end of the day right Every single day that you don't do it, it's costing you anyway. So there's only so so long that you can continue to go backwards and spend, especially if you've got staff doing nothing. I was just thinking as well too, you know, going to the days where the customers, you didn't have to do any advertising at all. There wasn't many people around with your business. So they just used to come to you anyway. So it was a lot easier. But now there's a lot of competition. And, you know, the thing that you, you've got to start doing as well is if your competitor's doing better than you, you've got to find out why and then do one what he's not doing or what they're not doing so that makes you different and stand out and to what they are doing, actually do it better as well. So, you mm. know, clients have got a really good choice out there and they want value for money and that's what you've got to look at. I was also mm. thinking, Jared, because I know it's getting close to the end now, but, um, mm. you know, the we, we go through a lot of different talks about everything. So it's a little bit dislocated for people. If they watch some, they sort of watch bits and pieces and, and, they're getting in information. It's like a jigsaw puzzle, puzzle, and sometimes they don't know how to put a jigsaw puzzle together. I mean, obviously, mm. that's what we do with our business. But why, you mm. know, if if somebody and, and we don't have to do this, but if if we were to do something fresh from the start again, what would it mm. be, and why don't we videoize it so people get to see so they know how to work it out from their business? Let's come up with an idea and start the process of what we do and show how we get the clients. Well, let's do a training on that uh, next week in the in our Facebook group, in our free Facebook group. Do you want to just so, 
Yeah, the one you just put up there. Let's do a training on that next week. Um, so there you go, guys. Uh, jump into it. Free Facebook group. Uh, if you're watching the recording or you are uh, basically either you're watching the recording or you're watching live now from wherever you are because we've got people on different channels at the moment, um, whether it's YouTube or one of our groups or wherever you are, um, jump into the free Facebook group. It's Business Warriors Social Media Strategies for Service-Based Business Owners. Um, if you go to, if you search Real Jared Harmon on Facebook, the group and the community is actually in there. Plus, uh, it is actually in the comments now for whichever channel you're on right now too. So jump into that group um, and we'll do a free training next week. We'll come up with a day. I'll post it on the page as well. Um, so if you jump into that group, we'll do that training next week as well. Um, and we'll be a little bit more specific around this topic as well. Because, you know, if you can just fill those, that opportunity cost, uh, if you can just fill that, um, it gives you extra money now, right, to be able to invest into more things, to be able to now go, okay, we can be a little bit more picky with who we want in now, okay? So we can put the pedal down to the metal on pedal replacing it. Pedal to the metal. Yes. That's what I like doing. <laughs> so, guys, jump in that group. We'll do that training next week. We'll give you a day and time that we are going to do that. Um, it will be recorded in the group as well. So um, hopefully we can get something like Zoom working so we can kind of get the whiteboard uh, drawer and things out and stuff like that as well. So hopefully we can do that. And that's the plan, right? And we got to wind this up because we're late for another meeting. So, guys, thanks so much for tuning in today. Uh, I, all I want you to do is just remember one thing as part of this show. There's other things I want you to remember, but I want you to remember this one thing. If you do not fight for your own freedom, absolutely nobody else will. So every single day you must get out there. Every single day you must take action. Every single day you must make it happen. And remember to be the warrior. We will see you on Monday, 1 p.m. Perth time. Uh, for the Marketing Funnels and Strategy Show. See you all then. Cheers. Bye. Bye, y'all.